Matt Taibbi wrote this. This is how I saw this originally. And it's mm-hmm. called In Defense of Substack. UCLA professor Sarah T. Roberts mourns the good old days of gatekeeping and credential worship. And he references these tweets of Just read her tweets. Okay, they're, I'm going to read them. So this is UCLA professor Sarah Roberts co-leader of something called the UCLA Center for Critical Internet Inquiry, media critics whose stated goal is strengthening democracy through culture making. And her, so this is, these are the tweets. Substack, which if people are not aware, is a place like uh, YouTube, but for writers, right, Eric, where you can write uh, independently. There was a story on it, by the way. Their business model is following OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not Somebody kidding. asked me recently what I was going to do. No, I'm not fans, kidding. But... So it's like OnlyFans is individual PORN and Substack is using the same model. And whatever it works, that's it's a funny. good business model, but I had to point okay, that out. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a nice <laughs> – yeah. Well, yeah, somebody asked me if I was – yeah, and I and I, I go, what's OnlyFans? Or maybe – and they're like, oh, God, Allison. So all right, so she writes, Substack is a dangerous direct threat to traditional news media, but more importantly, it is a threat to journalism. Great, you say journalism needs to be disrupted, but here's the problem. Journalists make their name doing reporting. This is governed by norms and practices and by ethics. Flawed and not always achieved true, but present and guiding what newsrooms do in every way? Yes. People not inside journalism or media may not know the specifics, but they often have a nebulous sense that there are norms, independence, disclosure of compromise, editorial oversight, and vetting of the reporting. That's what makes them trust enough to buy and read or watch. What is much less obvious to them is what it means when there is a reporter who makes her name in a newsroom, traditional paper, or fully online outlet, and then leaves for a substack or any analog. Uh, enter Allison Morrow. Taking that name reputation earned <laughs> from work done in the context I just stated. In this way, an investigative reporter who has earned her bona fides in a newsroom and under both strict editorial and journalistic principles has just cashed out and turned herself into an opinion writer. She likes it because she's finally got her independence from an editor. Please do not write for or pay for Substack. I have to say it. I believe it's dangerous. Take heed. You read it here first. And also don't go to YouTube or anywhere else where you see a journalist who quit mainstream media and now and now went independent. I mean, I feel like she's talking stop directly it, to me. Stop it. They're taking my money. You ran from it. <laughs> it's not it's not like you just said, oh, I'm going to leave, blah, 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 blah. You said, well, I've done all this. I put my heart in it. I've done all the studying. And I'm going to use Cheryl Atkinson because she did it before you. And she was at the highest, highest, highest level. And she was like, okay, these people, I'm working my butt off. I'm doing investigative journalism, actual journalism. I'm turning in uh, reports about Boeing. And there's, motor, there's you know, um, engines blowing up. There's actual problems in the flight lines. I've got witnesses. I've got people in the factories. And everybody says, okay, cool. We need to put that up. We got to get it out there for the news. And all of a sudden, ring, ring, phone calls. It's relegated. It, the stories get spiked or they get just riddled with holes and then eventually taken out. She says, okay, well, um, nobody's listening to me anymore. And I kind of feel like you may not be in a, I don't know if you're in the same situation or not, but almost any journalism with integrity almost has to go outside of the organization in order to do anything. And I understand there's honest journalism or journalists within, but God help them because how are they going to produce anything unless it's like, you know, something like tech, even that can be squirrely, but you know, it's gotta be something that doesn't actually affect the bottom line. There are just so many things that she doesn't cite about the problems plaguing modern newsrooms that make them, just as worthy of of a level of skepticism and distrust of anybody that you that you see in independent media is too. The stuff I've talked about on my channel about how fast the the deadlines come and how quick your stories have to be and how few people are staffed now and how you're doing a million different jobs and yeah, there are there are there are people to help you think through stuff, which I do like, and that's why Eric I talk to you a lot. Hey, can you watch this video for me? Give me your thoughts on it. What you think? I still almost have an editorial board in that sense. I, 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 because I, Mm -hmm. I, because, and and this is really at the heart of it. It's not the structure. It's the person. It's not the, it's not, you know, even, Mm -hmm. even the, the structure itself. uh, And I guess maybe I shouldn't make it an if and or, but it's, it's like, just because you could have the best newsroom in the entire world, but if you have a journalist whose heart is not in the right place and isn't, isn't, 
a critical thinker and isn't curious about things and is a big ego, you could have the best editorial board on the face of the earth and, you know, you're still going to get subpar journalism from that person. If you have a journalist mm -hmm. who holds themselves to a high ethic, you could put them out on Mars and they're going to still produce good material because they, they work by a certain standard that's an internal compass, not something that, that, you know, they're being forced to have a leash on them because they work in a, in a corporation. And there are plenty of reasons why working in mainstream newsrooms make it very difficult to do good journalism. And, and then finally, obviously she's speaking directly to people like myself who she's saying are, are taking well, their she, credentials and their trust. Well, no, more so your audience. More so she's trying to kill the Tell audience. the audience, yeah, but but That's about me, part. right? About somebody like me. Oh, yeah, And it's yeah, funny yeah. because Matt Taibbi is a guy and wrote about this and, and he has similar arguments, but but she uses she as the pronoun in here. So now I really feel she's talking to me because <laughs> she says she all the time. So I just, I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of weird that she thinks that Invite that I took on. trust with me to new media because the reality is actually a lot of people in the new media world, the lot, a lot of the audience in the new media world does not trust you because you came from <laughs> mainstream news. I get so many people that come to my channel and comment, you were part of the problem. I'm not subscribing. You know, I'm not, I don't, the, the folks who I think look at what I did in mainstream media and, and trust me more because of that, they trust it because I'm, I'm pulling the curtain back and showing the crap that they kind of suspected, but weren't totally sure about. Sure. They're not saying, oh, she's telling us about all these other things because she was in mainstream news. No, no. Most people that I, that I say, look at my, my background and come to my channel and write things. It's like, they're actually very skeptical of me until after they've watched some of my stuff, in mm -hmm. which case then I think they're, okay, Allison, maybe she's worth listening to, but they're not coming to my channel because I worked in mainstream corporate news and have more trust in me because of my bona fides from, no, that's just not no, my because experience. because you left it. Because I, I left. Ironically, your bona fides is that you Exactly. Left. Yeah. And that you have two Emmys, Emmys which is even better. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, she not only did it, she has two Emmys and mm -hmm. she quit. So now we trust her. Um, I think you should try inviting her on, do it publicly on Twitter. Yeah. I'll try to amplify okay. it too. I, I mean, seriously, you know, get her on and just ask the questions. Okay. Why? Okay. Why? Yeah. Okay. Why? Yeah. What, why, why aren't you going to do there? Um, aren't independent journalists breaking stories? Didn't they, you know, on and on there, there's a thousand ways you can go on. And I think you definitely should. It sounds like an editor on. is a babysitter. Like you're a total moron unless you have an editor who's just, you know, like a shock collar just slaps you, you know, D you wrote that wrong. It's it just, it, it also, it just makes me wonder what she knows about the editorial process. So I do have some questions for her about how long did she ever work in that field? One last thing I, I want to say too, is she, in the second to last tweet, she writes that, um, you're under both strict editorial and journalistic principles. Okay. Yes. They're you're under strict guidelines. I would say guidelines. Well, there's no principle, well, <laughs> and that's the problem. Perhaps, perhaps. I'm sure my 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 former peers would disagree, but but I'm going to say this: they're determined yes. by this the subjective human just as much as they're determined by a subjective human on these new media sites. And I've had plenty of experiences with managers who felt like certain voices were so out there that they shouldn't be allowed on the news. And honestly, I really felt like as a logical person who has, who has researched those particular topics, that that was a bias of my manager, not, not actually true to form from what I had found as the reporter. So sometimes your managers don't even let you talk about important topics. And so to say that you think that it's, it's somehow this world of objective, uh, decision making under tight principles of high ethics is mm. is just that's just it's just as fallible. I guess I I I think it's it's very naive and makes me wonder a how much time she spent in these newsrooms she's talking about, and b she, maybe she did spend some time in them. I I I know journalists who are still in the industry who probably would agree with her, um, but I think they have a very myopic view of 
of how the newsroom works. And it's probably because their viewpoint aligns with the majoritarian perspective. There you go. If you agree, no, if you agree with everything that's being right. said in the newsroom, then obviously they're preaching truth to yeah. power because you believe everything that's right. here. 